I certainly knew <laughs> that there is something positive within this product from Rare Beauty. <laughs> and there you have it, positive luminizer. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous, beautiful stars. <laughs> Paris Star Channel here with a new and possibly a very exciting episode. Guys, what is happening today? What is happening today? Today, our special guest of our episode is going to be... <laughs> rare Beauty! <laughs> Quite a lot of the Rare Beauty. <laughs> Yeah, so yes, in this box, the cosmetics, the products from Rare Beauty are here ready to be played and exposed because, well, it looks like Rare Beauty is a very famous and viral brand. So I decided to give it a deep dive and to see what is good in the year of 2023 from Rare Beauty and especially what is good for people with a mature skin, makeup over 40. This is the subject of today's episode. So yes, guys, if this is something that interests you, please tune in to the party where we celebrate diversity. Guys, diversity makes us all different gorgeous and beautiful. So yes, guys, let's start today's episodes. Today's episode is all about the uh, rare beauty. <laughs> All right, guys, and so here we are back with my collection of cosmetics from Rare Beauty. Right now, you can see that whole collection that I would like to feature in today's episode. In my opinion, and most importantly, in your opinion, in the opinion of the internet and of the buyers, those are the most famous and most viral products from Rare Beauty. And my oh my, <laughs> oh my oh my, if you would convert these products into real money, into euros, because obviously um, I live uh, in France and I pay in euro, there is over 400 euros, 400 euros over uh, worth in these products. It is absolutely insane. And... You know, uh, Rare Beauty is considered as an affordable brand, luxurious, affordable brand. So, yeah, over 400 euro investment is a big deal. So that is why my mission, it is my mission to jump into this brand and explore the products so that maybe some of these products are going to be your favorites from now on. Who knows? We will see. <laughs> Guys, I personally decided to give a deep dive into the brand and not because of the products from the brand that are super viral and famous and very often sold out, <laughs> but um, as well because of the creator of the Rare Beauty, Selena Gomez, because her approach to the beauty and to the subject, it is definitely very unique and in my opinion, deserves a lot of attention. Um, I will be totally honest with you. I do not know Selena Gomez as an artist and as a person herself because she's a celebrity from United States of America. So here in Europe, um, well, for me personally, she was not that famous. Um, but then when she created her, her brand with the cosmetics, the beauty brands, she surfaced and now I know her. I know her a lot and now I know her unique approach to the subject. What I'm trying to say, 1% of total income from the rare beauty goes into helping people. Helping people. <laughs> Uh, I'm a little bit touched now. Um, helping these people who are lost with it, <laughs> who are looking for their own personality and who are asking themselves who I am in this world. 
So, um, if you're buying products from Rare Beauty, a little per percentage, 1% goes after to, to help people. And I think that is really very unique and very beautiful. So imagine if I have spent 400 euros for Rare Beauty, 1% from 400 goes into helping people. How good is that? I mean, which, wh wh like, who does that? Which beauty brand does that? Which beauty brand decides to help people <laughs> by creating um, this kind of a, like, you know, a helping hand? And especially in 2023, after everything what has happened in the past and it's still happening, people need help. Sometimes they don't, uh, they don't admit that they might need help. And I'm really very full of respect for Selena Gomez and her beauty brand that she decided not to put all their money out, all her money into the pocket and just like spend some time in Bali but she actually decided to give some part of the money to help people in needs who have lost themselves within. I think it is great. Good, enough about talking, guys. It is time to play with makeup. But before we're going to play with makeup, of course, we're going to have a little bit of a session. First, what I would like to talk about would be the foundation. All right, guys, so let's dive deep into the subject, okay? What I would like to talk about is this product and it's called Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation in the shade 160C. This is how the product looks like. And I was definitely very intrigued about this product because this product is considered to be some sort of a serum foundation. I guess um, uh, in these days, I'm very interested in such kind of a foundations. The foundations that are non-drying, if they can be moisturizing, that's even better. And they just look like a second skin. And this foundation basically looked like the one but before we're going to apply this to my face first let's jump into the ingredients list and let's see and verify what kind of an ingredients what kind of ingredients that they make uh, this foundation a serum foundation do does it have so right now you can see a list of ingredients and you can see some things that are marked in orange and some things that are marked in green. Just a, a disclaimer, I am not any expert when it comes to ingredients. I study ingredients because I want to know what am I putting on my face and keeping on my face for five hours, 10 hours, sometimes even 15 hours. Are they nourishing to my skin or are they damaging to my skin? For me, it is important. However, what kind of an approach is yours to the subject? that's totally fine. That is your approach. And <laughs> that, that's all what I, what I can say about it. Good. So what, what we can see about the ingredients, in my opinion, orange things, there are things that are mm, okay, <laughs> acceptable and greens that are very beneficial. Me personally, so what we see in the beginning, we see um, on the top of the list, ingredients that are used to formulate the product, to give a little bit of a viscosity, to give a little bit of a consistency. And yeah, well, I suppose, you know, some silicones as well. They, will, they are going to create some sort of a film on your skin. And um, what I see in here, uh, the, in, the, these ingredients, they do not have any, there might not have any uh, negative uh, things to your skin, but at the same time, they do not bring anything beneficial to your skin. These ingredients that are just used to formulate the product. What I am actually very surprised is that by the beginning, I do not see water. It is not a water-based foundation, very intriguing product. And I do not see any glycerin, no moisturizers in here in the beginning. Very intriguing and no emollients in the beginning. Because usually these days, uh, formulated for uh, foundations, they usually start with water, glycerin and 
emollients, which basically brings a lot of moisture to your skin and locks the moisture in your skin. And then you have the other ingredients. In here, we don't have that. We only have ingredients that are used to formulate the product. And then in orange, I marked silica. Silica is a natural mineral. And my personal issue with silica is that it is extremely drying to my skin. In my opinion, silica is extremely drying to my skin and my skin personally don't like silica. For my, for my age, aging skin, I'm over 40 years old, my skin is normal to dry. If I have silica, silica is going to dry to suck out all life from my skin. It's inevitable. That's why, in my personal opinion, I marked it in orange. And that is why it is marked like that. And then another uh, ingredient marked in orange is phenoxyethanol, and it is a conservant. In some opinions, it is a controversial conservant. I'm not going to jump deep into that, but what I can say by observing ingredients that many products these days, they're getting rid of the phenoxyethanols. Some brands decided to keep it. If you have conservants, then you, the longevity of the product itself, it's extended. So there's something for something. And then, and then after that, you have so many, so many incredible, amazing actives. I actually have prepared myself and then I decided if I'm going to talk about all of these products, all of these ingredients, actually, we're not going to have enough time for the for the episode. And since some of you have requested shorter episodes, we're going to cut this through and I'm going to say it uh, in a sh with a shortcut. OK, so what are you looking when you're looking at such kind of a ingredients marked in green. First, we're going to say that there is a tocopherol quite up, which is a vitamin E, which is a very potent, incredible antioxidant that is going to protect your skin against the external stressors. Wonderful. And then we have actives. What kind of actives? These are the botanical actives. How wonderful. In the form of lotus flower, gardenia, wild, white lily water, yarrow, brown, uh, brown, brown algae, and then sunflower seed oil, ginseng root extract, passion fruit extract, which is like maracuja, very famous ingredient, especially when it comes to tart, for example, brand. They, they infuse the maracuja extracts in their lips, in their oils, in their foundations, even now, very interesting, very good, uh, naturally derived ingredients. Linden flower extract and cold's foot leaf, leaf extract. These are these extracts, these are these ingredients that you're looking right now. What do they do? All the goodies, guys. All the goodies. It is, uh, well, to summarize everything without, you know, separating when uh, ingredient, every ingredient by, one by one. You're looking at the ingredients that has an incredible anti-aging features, that they're smoothing to your skin, that they're soothing to your skin. They, um, they, uh, they fight with some sort of an inflammation. They are very good revitalizing, nourishing and moisturizing ingredients. So, and most importantly as well, a protective ingredients because some of them, they contain lots of very potent, wonderful minerals and antioxidants that are going to protect your skin against the external stressors. So yes, that would be all when it comes to uh, this formulation. If I look at these ingredients, I can definitely confirm that it is a great ingredients list that is alcohol free, how wonderful. It is an alcohol-free um, foundation filled with naturally derived ingredients, which are botanical ingredients that are going to give you a wonderful revitalizing, moisturizing, protective uh, features to your skin. So yes, guys, that will be all when it comes to ingredients. And right, right now, let's jump into the demo and see what we can have. 
from the rare beauty and how we can transform yourself with these products. All right, guys, so we are ready to apply makeup and to transform ourselves into the rare beauty extravaganza person. <laughs> so just to say, uh, my skin is normal to drive, to drive. Yeah, I'm not driving anywhere. My skin is normal to dry. Um, I'm over 40 years old and um i put well this is how the skin looks like when you're over 40 years old as you can see and this is because i don't use any kind of like botox or whatever some people they inject botox in here so that the muscles that are responsible for the movement they're basically numb i don't do that so when i move in here you can see all my fine lines and the wrinkles and some of them they decided to stay for like forever <laughs> so that is um that is my truth i you know i i i don't think that i need any kind of a botox i don't i don't even know how i would feel my and how my face would feel with my muscles here being numb and then without it like with my face which is like gonna <laughs> gonna go down anyway i digress so this is how my skin looks like when it's moisturized and prepared to use the makeup so the first product that i would like to talk about is this one and it is always an optimist base okay because this is in french and this is in english so it is well the packaging actually is very cute it is wonderful it is very thought and this is something about the celebrity brand selena gomez celebrity brand all her products even the packaging and everything it is very well thought and executed not every celebrity brand does it while well, selena gomez definitely deserves a lot of bravo and applause for thinking how the product should look like for presenting the product into the public i think everything is kind of co cohesive wonderful and i love it so yes let's go back to the primer the first product that we're going to use is always an optimist pore diffusing primer this is how the product looks like and i have mine in the travel size size 15 milliliters because well i don't need a lot of pore diffusing um my area my very kind of like fragile area and area in which where makeup doesn't look good is always in here over here you can see basically my pores and everything is usually exposed in here so what are we going to do we're going to use just a little bit of this primer to see if does it makes any any difference and any change so this is the little the little bottle and i'm going to squeeze just a little bit of it maybe just like so really not much because I am planning to use it just over here to see if anything is going to happen. Okay, it is very nice in touch by uh, primer. Very smoothing. It doesn't have it doesn't have any scent. Okay. Nice. And then I'm not gonna do anything with this side because I want to see um, if it doesn't make any sense or any change or whatever. In touch, it is very kind of slick, should I say, smoothing slick, which hmm, I don't know, we'll see. Because some some of the of the primers, they're so smooth that some of the products like foundations maybe not this one we're going to see it has a problem to adhere if it's too slippery some of the foundation especially thin foundations they have a problem to adhere to to the surface we'll see how it is going to be with this primer let me approach if you can see any difference 
this is a, uh, precise with a primer. I don't know if it's visible optical difference, but I can definitely sense some smoothness in touch in here where I applied it. And here, here is just okay. It's just a normal skin. All right, so that would be the primer. Right now, let's jump into two products. And the first one that I would like to talk about would be the foundation, guys, the star. And it is right over here. Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation. Mine is in the shade 100C. We have 28 milliliters of the product. This is how the product looks like. And the whole presentation of these products is absolutely incredible. Um, I love it, guys. I, I really love it. I really like it. And we are going to apply the foundation with a special brush. When I said that I, get, that I did a big, deep dive into the brand, I really mean it. Which means I wanted to explore the products, but then I wanted to use the products with the designed accessories straight from the Rare Beauty, so that if something is not going to work out, I am not going to take the blame because I followed everything that has been said by the brand itself. So, the first accessory that is going to be paired with this foundation would be this one, guys, which is Liquid Touch Brush Foundation. This is how the product looks like. And I don't know. Um, people who are watching my channel, they know that I'm absolutely crazy when it comes to angled brushes. <laughs> help, help. I love angled brushes. So when, when I saw another very interesting angled brush, I was very interested and very intrigued. And then I decided that I have to have it. So there you have it. Let's unbox it and see the brush. I mean, wow, the brush. Oh my gosh. I don't know if, if camera can show it. This is gold. Look how incredibly, like how it is profiled incredibly. <laughs> wow. I, I like, oh wow. Okay. And the density of the brush is just about right. The size of the brush is just about right. I don't like super flat, super huge brushes. I think this brush is absolutely perfect. So yes, now let's jump into the foundation. Um, and as I've mentioned before, my foundation is in the shade 100C. And just look at this. Can you hear it? There is a special things inside to stir all the ingredients because I'll be totally honest with you. When I unboxed it, I was a little bit shook and a little bit scared because there was like formulation was separated. So I think this, these things inside, they are made on purpose. So definitely, before you're going to open the product and use the product, give it a big shake. And if you are going to see a separation of the product, do not freak out. First, try to stir it like really very firmly and then open the product. And then if it doesn't smell funky, it only smells like a foundation. You should not be afraid. This is how this for this this foundation has been formulated. I was very surprised. No water based foundation, no glycerin based foundation, no emollients, just, you know, standard silicones and other uh, ingredients used to formulate. And this is the result. 
And yeah, anyway, what I'm trying to say as well, sometimes you have the foundations when you can see the separation, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and you're right. <laughs> you're right. But this foundation has a possibility to separate, but do not be scared, do not be afraid. Give it a little bit of a firmly shake and you should be just fine, okay? And there is one in uh, interesting thing on the website because I was preparing myself for this episode, as always, I was preparing myself. And if you would watch Selena Gomez tutorials, she adds some dots to, this, to, to her skin. But then if you would go to the website of Rare Beauty, I think it's some sort of a mistake. I, I, nah. They're saying to take this type of a dome foot and use only one dot. Ah, <laughs> I tried it. This is not my first impression. This is actually a reliable and honest test. And there were, there's no, not enough pigment to use it with only one dot. It's impossible. On top of that, this is a very thin consistency guys a very thin consistency meaning that if you're not going to put much if you're not going to put a lot the, the 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 foundation after a few hours is going to disappear a little bit so it is a foundation which you have to learn where is the this kind of like sweet spot when you have enough courage but courage <laughs> enough courage and coverage <laughs> when you have enough coverage but you have not over covered yourself, if that makes sense. Good. So the foundation is shook and we are ready. I am not going to use one dot, but I tr will try to use um, like one dip, should I say. And I personally don't have any problems with the foundations with the doe foot. I think it is very nice and very practical. If you have some sort of an issues with the hygiene, I personally don't because we all use concealers with doe foots and we, we don't have issues. Why we should have issues then with a foundation? But if you do, you can use a palette, put a little bit of a, on a palette and then use it from the palette. Why I like the doe foot applicator is because I do not waste product. Sometimes when I use the pump, I squeeze too much and then ah, I don't need it. I'm not going to put this foundation back into the bottle. And some of the foundations, the luxury foundations that I'm using, they're very pricey. So I am wasting products. With the doe foot, I use as much product as I need and I love it. <laughs> so yes, guys, let's open the product and let's start applying on Selena Gomez tutorials. She basically used few dots, so we shall do exactly the same. We shall use only few dots and see what will happen. Maybe let's start like this. There is no paraffin in here and it is definitely a very thin lightweight consistency breathable something that i like and yes here we're going to use this brush and see what is gonna happen okay yeah there's definitely quite a lot of of pigment in here i'm actually quite surprised how it spreads i don't know if you can see it Yeah, I don't think I, I, I need more than the, more than these dots that I use. It spreads very nice and, oh wow, it sets almost. Like I have an impression that it kind of like sets already. All right, good. I don't know, should I add a little bit more or keep it like that, keep it natural? Hmm, hmm, decisions, decisions. I might use a concealer after for this area because, well, this claims to be, I think, medium type of a foundation. I can confirm it. It is light to medium foundation. It depends how much you're going to layer. And for me, I think it is fine. There is a little bit of imperfection right over here that is peeking through. No drama. I'm going to use a little bit of a concealer after 
and we'll see how it is going to cover that. Let me then approach so that you can see from the close-up how the foundation looks like. It looks nice, but it, it goes towards more makeup type of a situation here. It is, it is difficult to explain. And then you have a normal non-covered face. Hello, <laughs> reality. And a little bit of the foundation right over here. Let me have a closer look in here. So that is the size with the primer. And then we're gonna have a comparison with the other side. Good. So that would be um, uh, that would be half of my uh, my face with a foundation. By the way, the brush, I like it. I think it's cute. I think it works really very nice with the foundation, guys. I am quite impressed. So yes, guys, let's jump now to another application. And another application would be concealer and another brush. <laughs> All right, guys, so it's time to apply now the concealer. And it is very something very interesting and something that um, deserves a little bit of a bravo and applause, which means that the brand is claiming if you have a foundation in the shade 100C, you should or you ought to buy a concealer with the same shade because they are meant to be blended together which is so cool because, for example, without any shade to the brand like Dior, with Dior, my foundation shade might be 0 0.5 and 1N or 1.5N and the concealer is completely different, like 0. They're not matchy, matchy at all, the shades. You actually, or me, I have to uh, explore the brand and the products to, do, to be matchy, matchy. The similar things, for example, without any shades, go to my beloved foundation from Givenchy, which is the um, Prism Libre Glow. I have a foundation in the shade, I think, 120N, but then I have a concealer in the shade, I think, 105C, non-cohesive, different shades, while the Rare Beauty has a different approach, and they're claiming if you have a foundation in one shade, you should have exact match of the concealer in that shade, and I love that. So we're going to talk and we're going to apply this concealer and it is the Liquid Touch Brightening Concealer in the same shade as a foundation, 160C. And there is a 7.5 milliliters of the product. This is how the product looks like and the presentation again it is incredible. It is very nice. What is actually funny about this is that um, they're, 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 they're having kind of like different caps. The foundation has a round cap. This is a flat cap. <laughs> Their approach is definitely very intriguing and definitely very unique. So yes, guys. And then this concealer we are going to um, to apply with their special designed brush, which is this one, Liquid Touch Brush. <laughs> this is how the product looks like. And yeah, I'm actually very curious how everything is going to uh, is going to apply and blend all together. I definitely was very interested in these accessories, in these tools. And since it's another angled brush, I was like, <laughs> and these brushes, actually, they're very similar to the brushes, for example, from Pat McGrath as well, the angled brushes. So yeah, I, I guess it might be a little bit of an affordable version uh, in comparison with Pat McGrath. But yes, guys, um, let's go and let's unbox this uh, this concealer brush. All right, guys, it is a very interesting brush. 
very similar to the to the foundation brush kind of like shrunk they're very similar and very nice and soft bristles awesome love that absolutely love that so let's let's try it out and let's try and apply the concealer by the way guys i'm filming in natural light so that uh, my shades and everything what you can see on the camera is as much accurate as possible but right now outside the weather is like <laughs> not very flattering so i lost some natural light still i'm filming and we'll see how far it is gonna go but outside there's no more light although it's the middle of the day <laughs> good i digress a little bit so Let's take a little bit of this concealer and apply it in the way that Selena Gomez applies that concealer with her kind of tutorial videos. So let's let's open it and boop, there is a very unique, as you can see, doe foot applicator, a very unique shape. And what she does basically, she does she does like one two three and four and this is exactly how are we going to follow because i want to be as accurate as possible so that after doing the longevity test if something's gonna work out or something is not gonna work out for me during this test and i will be talking about it at least i can say i followed everything what I've been told to follow and I used all the products and accessories as has been mentioned in these kind of like brand tutorial videos, you know? So yeah, but I talk too much. <laughs> as always, I talk too much. Okay, good. Let's let's apply this concealer. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. It, it is, oh, it is pigmented. I was not expecting that it's going to be that pigmented. The pigmentation is here. Um, the brush applies very nicely, the product. It gives me a very nice coverage, but I suppose um, I can say that it's rather a lightweight consistency in here, which I like. I don't like super kind of like paste type concealer. This one is not the one. It gives me a nice coverage just about right. And yeah, I guess... It blends with the foundation without um, giving a little bit of a brightening effect, but without like kind of standing out. Good. I like this brush. I think it's a very nice brush and it's ankle. <laughs> Send help. <laughs> okay. Wow. Good. I think it is applied now. And what is actually very in interesting and intriguing is like, I have an impression that the foundation has set on its own. And I think that the concealer is kind of setting on its own as well. And it doesn't really need anything extra. I'm using my finger just a little bit to use the temperature of my, on my, bo of my body to blend everything all together because my area and my under eye area is definitely very demanding. It has lots of fine lines, lots of wrinkles. And yeah, I prefer to, to, to press a little bit of a product to the skin. And this is the result. <laughs> I mean, rare beauty. Wow. So um, this is how the concealer and the foundation from rare beauty looks like. Let me approach. Nice. It looks very natural. And I think this is where the Rare Beauty as a brand is going towards too, as some sort of a natural beauty from within brand. And I love it. It speaks to me because my channel is the same. It goes towards your beauty from within instead of your covered beauty and repaint it from the zero <laughs> anyway everyone likes its own type of a makeup full coverage natural however you like it it's totally fine and it's good that everyone is unique and is having its own approach anyway i digress so this is the side with the foundation and with the concealer freshly applied and this isn't 
<laughs> wow, I like it. I think it looks very nice, very natural. And um, yeah, as I said, the foundation has practically set. The concealer, I'm not sure if does it needs to be set. We're going to leave it a little bit longer uh, in my under eye area and see uh if it's gonna crease or not so guys allow me now to cut through and apply the foundation of the camera and the concealer of the camera on the other side and then we're gonna continue with this review all right guys so the foundation and the concealer is applied and this is how the whole situation looks like just a little reminder i put some of the primer in this area so let me approach so that you can see everything from the close-up what do you think when it comes to the primer i do not see a much of the difference a little bit maybe smoothing a smoothing surface here in a touch but when it comes to visual effect I do not see much of the difference. Maybe this type of a primer helps the foundation to last longer. I definitely feel some smoothness in a touch, but optically I just see just a little, little teeny tiny of the difference. And when it comes to concealer, as you can see, it has creased. But then again, my under eye area is definitely very demanding. So for me, it is not a big deal and it is not a very big of a surprise. This is how the foundation and the concealer looks like from the close-up and my pores and everything from the close-up. You can have a look because my channel is all about the, the honesty, you know. I have nothing to hide. Why should I, you know? What kind of purpose then this channel would have been if I would not be honest I build all my relationship on, of, on, on honesty. So there you have it, guys. So this is how the foundation and concealer looks like. And then the brushes. I like the brushes. I really like these brushes. They glide. They, they apply um, uh, the foundation very nicely without look, soaking the product. Wait, wait, wait. Do, do, I, do I have something to show you? Like, let me show you white situation here see no transfer it did not soak the product it basically spread the product but didn't soak the product how wonderful and the teeny tiny brush very nice although this one is firm it's not fluffy when you can basically um fluff it out you kind of press it and spread it and tap it but not like doing it like smoke it out should i say um anyway i digress guys this is how it looks like so far the first impressions are very good and the tools in the form of the brushes i love it but as you can see i look a little bit ghostly so um this is my personal issue with the foundation that if I would add, uh, um, add it, if I, if I would apply it um, in a in a very little quantities, um, that the coverage would be not good enough and would disappear. And then, uh, what I am trying to say is that with this foundation, you have to learn the sweet spot, how many you need to make it look good and natural. And I think that I have crossed that line and it already looks a little bit makeup-y. This is definitely that type of foundation that you, that you need to learn how to use it. Anyway, I digress as always. Right now, let's jump into another product and it's going to be an, another super viral from Rare Beauty product and it is the names. The names are so cute. It is incredible. It's called Warm Wishes Effortless Bronzer Stick and mine is in the shade Power Boost. This is how the product looks like. And yeah, as I've said, it is another super viral and famous product from Rare Beauty, usually sold out everywhere. It is very difficult to snatch it, to get it but I was lucky enough to have it. So let's have a look. By the way, we're, we started spring. 
So we're still in that type of a period when we don't have much of a sun. So I do me basically during autumn and winter, I do not use bronzers because I'm very fair, uh, fair tone skin. I have a very fair tone skin, but right now maybe it is time to look for our bronzers and give ourselves a little bit of a bronzy look. So there you have it, the, bl the bronzer in the stick. I look so cute. Let's see the shade and very important thing how the shade is going to you look on my fair tone skin. Oh, by the way, I'm having some kind of a, like I look at the camera and I'm where is this glow coming from? Is it from my skincare? Because I definitely prepped my skin. Last time when I used the Guerlain Terracotta and I see that uh, people are raving about the Terracotta and I I wanted to rave about that terracotta as well because it looked beautiful. The foundation looked beautiful, but as soon as I started to have my uh, my face movements, it looked dry. So I prepped my skin for this test as best as I could. And maybe this is that kind of a glow that comes from within. And I like it. I like it. It's kind of like peeking through uh, the foundation. I don't have any illuminating primer, just my skincare digression let's go and let's apply this bronzer and let's see good let's add a, a little bit of a of a shade to my face so i'm going to start over here oh wow oh wow right from the beginning it gives you the pigment for example in comparison with the fancy sticks you have to warm it up warm it, warm it, warm it, warm it, warm it. and then you from the palm of your hand you have to apply it in here you can apply instantly. Wow, okay. Wow, nice. Good. And the shade, the power boost shade. Love that. Very interesting shade. Not, I don't like super warm tone uh, bronzers because I basically use bronzers rather more to contour. Give myself a little bit of a contour rather than bronze. Wow, okay. And let's see how it is going to look like while blended. I'm going to use my trusty sponge and see how it blends, okay? <laughs> I wanted to give myself a little bit of a lift, which means that I'm uh, rather will try to blend inwards than in here. A little bit of a shade to my face. It blends very nice. See, this is with a bronzer. This is without the bronzer. Okay. I don't think I, I need a lot of it, you know. It's spread. Oh, wow. It applies very nice. Can you actually see it? It blends very nice. Okay, it brings, like, life is coming back to my skin and it blends very nice with the foundation. Nothing is lifting, nothing is moving. Great, love that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, okay. Um, I don't know if you can see that type of a very subtle, very subtle, but at the same time, a beautiful bronzy look as if something is happening. This kind of like, <laughs> I call it je ne sais quoi moment. It's like, is there something on your face? There isn't. Nice. Very nice. I guess with this, I can go out and I can finish my makeup without adding anything more. But of course, we have more products to be featured. This looks very pretty. This looks very natural. Pretty, 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 pretty. I have nothing bad to say so far. <laughs> oh my gosh, so far so good. So the Rare Beauty bronzer stick, as you can see, I just applied it just a little bit and 
I already have enough. It is. It looks nice, but most importantly, it doesn't look like makeup. It looks natural and it gives me a beautiful kind of light shade type of a situation to my face. Good. Very good. Okay. So right now, let's jump into another product. All right. So right now, it's time to add a little bit more of a color in the form of the liquid blush, in the form of a liquid highlighter luminizer and then let's use a specially designed brush to make it happen so let's do it in order guys let's do it in order and then let's apply it all together first product that i would like to talk about which would be this one and it is soft pinch dewy liquid blush in the shade happy there is 7.5 milliliters of the product. This is how the product looks like. And it is another a super viral product from Rare Beauty, usually sold out. She has two types of blushes that are normal, kind of like a velvet matte, satin matte, and then another ones that are dewy. And I went to the dewy side because um, I'm a little bit scared of matte products, especially when I need to apply them to this area, which this area on my face is very dry. Matte products might dry even more this area, making it look wrinkly and not very flattering, you know? But uh, guys, to the subject, to the subject. So I chose this type of a blush and look how beautiful and pinky it looks like. I cannot wait to apply it but before we're going to apply it we are actually going to mix it with a highlighter which is going to be in a very similar shade what am i talking about about this product and it's called oh there it is positive the word positive i knew there was something positive in this <laughs> I certainly knew <laughs> that there is something positive within this product from Rare Beauty. <laughs> and there you have it. Positive luminizer. <laughs> How it is going to perform, we don't know. But at least it is written. Positive. Positive product. <laughs> but guys, okay. Let's let's become a little bit more positive. Uh, not positive, <laughs> but like serious. Positive Light Liquid Luminizer in the shade Enchant. There is a 15 milliliters of the product. This is how the product looks like. And it is kind of, it's having that kind of a special dreamy uh, type of, um, uh, special dreamy type of a shade right over here. Wow, it is incredible. It is very pretty. And what I want to do, by the way, this is the blush. And this is the luminizer, I think. Both of them, they're going to blend wonderfully. There's that kind of, uh, like, some sort of a, I don't know, very dreamy, very fantasy type of, of a shade. I think they're going to blend all together. So in order to blend them all together, we are actually going to use another tool from the Rare Beauty and it is right over here and it's called Soft Pinch Blush, uh, Soft Pinch Brush. It is that type of a brush that can be used for the blush. I always lose my tongue when I'm talking about the brush and the blush. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, guys, this is how the product looks like. And once again, another tool, another accessory that I'm very interested in, and I definitely want to use it and see how it is going to perform with the products from the Rare Beauty. So let's go and unbox it.
<laughs> oh wow, oh wow! Oh my gosh, look at this. Another angled brush, but how pretty! Oh! Wow, it gives me a little bit of a vibe of BK brushes, but BK brushes, before they came out, that's what came out, the rare beauty. So, is it possible that the BK brushes that are so famous these days, they were inspired by the originals from the rare beauty? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You use the tools and the accessories however you like. It is not. Oh my gosh. It is so nice. It is so nice and so far. Ah! Um, I'm very excited. Guys, okay, so let's go and apply the products in the form of the blush and in the form of the highlighter. Since these products are not new, I definitely and we all probably have seen lots of reviews and especially certain reviews from TikTok without any shade guys because I'm far from it. But like certain reviews the drama from the tiktok in which people uh, i don't know i don't want to put any shade but uh, when i'm watching such kind of a tiktok videos with people with a heavy hand full coverage people with a heavy hand over ex over applying and then they're saying oh my gosh it's too much pigment well then apply less or at least have a look how i am going to apply it so that everyone can see from now on that it is possible not to over apply these products and make it look gorgeous and beautiful. So there you have it. This is how uh, I'm going to show you this. So first I'm going to take this blush in the shade Happy. And look at this cute little dofert. How beautiful the shade Happy is. And I am going to take the palette and not, I'm not going to apply it directly to my face because that would be crazy. And just like so. And now another product that I'm going to take would be this highlighter. And this highlighter is very interesting, which means the consistency is rather oily. I don't know what is inside that makes this highlighter consistency so oily, so different, for example, in comparison with Charlotte Tilbury. Um, so be careful with when you apply this product. This is how I apply it. And this is how, uh, because I've been testing this product already. And um, this is how I believe it would be able to work. Basically, the test of this product can be seen in my in my previous videos. That's why I, I know how to work with this product. A little bit of a disclaimer. Good. Let's take this highlighter and apply it just like so to this palette. See? So now on the palette, let me close it so that it won't dry or anything. So right now, as you can see on my palette, you have blush and a highlighter. And what are we going to do at this moment? I am going to take my finger and mix the formulas, not on my face actually, but directly right over here on my palette. See, and now I have lots of formulation in here. And this is how I am going to apply it. And now I'm going to take this brush and feather it out without fear of having too much pigment. As you can see, it all, it is already giving a lot of pigment, but do not be afraid as it can be blended out. And look how much has left, like it's still over here. It is insane. This is definitely a very pigmented blush, but you can definitely make it work out. Um, if you think that this is too much, because you know, this is a test. So I wanted to show you, I applied three fingers. 
I first, I mixed and I applied three fingers. If you think this is too much, you can apply two fingers. If you think that still this is too much, you can apply one finger. So there is a control. You just, you know, this is how I'm doing it. But for this test, I applied um, like this because I think it is very nice and very cute. And this is how I like it. And look, it's still glowy. There is a little bit of a light, a little bit of a live <laughs> on my face. And I love it, guys. Good. On to the next product. All right. We're almost done when it comes to application. The next product that I would like to use and I would like to test would be the powder. And there you have it. It's over here. It's called Always an Optimist Soft Radiance Setting Powder. It has shades and mine is in the shade light. There is 10 grams of the product. This is how the product looks like. And I'm very intrigued because when it comes to this shade, especially this shade light, it has some sort of a very subtle lavender pinky type of a shade. I don't know if you can see it. Probably the camera is showing you that it's kind of like warm tone yellow, but it's actually uh, almost at the very similar shade as this eyelid, which means is it going to even out my skin tone? I wonder. And guys, to use this powder, we are going to use it with a special brush. That special brush that I'm talking about is this one, and it's called Always an Optimist Powder Brush. This is how the product looks like. And once again, a very interesting and intriguing product, an accessory that I would like to talk, uh, talk about and try it out. So let's get into the unboxing, guys, okay? guys it is a very nice fluffy brush but not too large i do not like super large brushes the, i think this one is just about perfect you know you can get anywhere you want without an overpowdering yourself i think the size is just about right so yes and then let's go into the powder and let's open it and there is something very interested in here, as you can see, the sign and the logo of the brand. And I suppose, how do you open it? Ah, okay. So, very clever. You just switch it in here and then you put some of the products. Right now it is protected by the stickers. So, by the sticker, protecting sticker. So, let's take off the sticker and let's apply the powder. Right, guys so the product now is opened and it's unsealed let's take a little bit of that powder from here into the lid just like so you know i don't really know what kind of power this powder has some of them they're very setting some of them they're very drying i don't know i don't know we're just going to do a little bit of uh, of testing this this powder let me touch it Okay, it is very finely milled, very smooth. And I think this for the test is going to be more than enough. And I am going to apply it only on this half of my face to see the difference with a powder side and with non-powder side. I'm going to take this unique brush 
that is meant to be applied with this powder and then I'm going to apply all of it from the eyelid and then I'm going to mix it with a brush. Can you see? It is very lightweight, but definitely it applies very nice to the brush. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Good, I think we have it. So right now, let's gently pat the powder. But hey, before we're going to do that, let me show you my under eye area, the concealer. It definitely has creased. It definitely, I, I can see my fine lines and wrinkles. So it's, um, maybe it's on more of a, of a drying side, but the concealer has set. So I am not going to add extra dryness to my under area. I don't want to tire my uh, under eye area too much. I'm just going to apply gently this powder to the half of my face and see the result. Okay, what I can tell right now is that the powder softly mattified my skin, but not super mattified my skin. And it gives me that kind of a velvety matte finish. Very nice. How is my, my skin is smooth in touch. It's pretty. And the brush, it's very nice and soft and it distributed the powder, the bristle, the, the size of the brush is just about perfect. As you can see, to glide on, two big brushes, powder brushes, are not my favorite. This one is perfect and it is shaped. As you can see, another angled brush, <laughs> another angled brush. So I guess it's good that I did half with the powder and half without the powder because right now I can approach so that you can see side by side this side without oh my gosh what is see this is what is happening sometimes like and then I sometimes I need to fix the makeup of the camera what uh, please excuse me what is happening I'm gonna fix this after anyway we're gonna continue with we're gonna go with the flow so uh, this side is without the powder it looks nice, it looks natural, it, look health, it looks healthy, glowy, but like not, not like oily glowy. It's just, ju what is this? It's just about right. And then it's a powder side and it is a soft kind of matte um, powdery side, but not like, not, not really drying. As you can see, my skin is still bouncy with terracotta when I did this. My fine lines and with Guerlain and Terracotta when I did this, my fine lines just, just stay. And I was like, go away, Sasha away. No, they didn't go away. <laughs> with this one, my skin is still bouncy. Um, I like both sides because sometimes I'm in a mood for the little bit of a powder and this is how it looks like. It looks pretty. And sometimes I'm in the mood for a little bit of a glow and I like it. I like it. I think it looks really very nice. So right now we don't have many things and products to be featured, but still we do have some. These products has been featured already on my channel and these were the, uh, the highlighters, guys. The, the super viral sold out everywhere highlighters by Rare Beauty. They are over here and it is a positive light silky touch highlighter in the shade enlighten and in the shade exhilarate this is how these products looks like and they're definitely very unique very kind very kind of the formulation is very unique um they're very shiny but these highlighters they're super punchy shiny if you are a subtle highlight type of a person, I would definitely recommend to go with a liquid highlighter. But if you would like to pack a punch to your look, these highlighters, they got you covered because they are incredible. I'm always having problems with opening them. This is one of them, the lightest, which is called Enlighten, and the other one is called Exhilarate. So, 
um, what I am going to do, I'm going to take a special highlighter brush and apply it to my face. The brush that I'm talking about is this one, Positive Light Precision Brush. This is how the product looks like and I, I like this brush. I really like this brush. I think it's a very interesting brush, a very kind of like multifunctional type of a brush that you can use for many purposes. And a little bit of a surprise, guys, a little bit of a surprise because the handles of these brushes, they're different with the handle of the latest and the newest brush uh, the highlighter brush. These ones, the handle seems to be, I don't know, wooden, made of wood. I don't know. This one feels like it's made of, it's very light. These ones are more heavy. I, I'm having an impression, but this is like, you know, the conspiracy, <laughs> allegedly. I think this is made of plastic, the handle, while these handles, they're made of wood. And the color is definitely different and sig significantly different. Something has changed. Something has changed old brushes and the latest and the newest brush. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to use just a little bit of these highlighters for the sake of this video. I'm going to take this brush and look at this. I'm going to do, to do this. And I'm going to apply just a little bit. See what is happening? The highlight is already appearing here. <laughs> I need to take this off because I don't want a super, super beaming uh, highlight. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh no, I need to take, I need to blend it. Because I don't, I, I do want to have some of the highlight, but not too much. This is what I said. It is definitely a very punchy type of a highlight. And it is already in here. One single swipe and boom, there you have it and you're already shiny and glowy. Beautiful, gorgeous. But then what I want to do with these highlighters as well, I want to put them on my eyelids and show you how beautiful and gorgeous these products looks on my eyelid. So first what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that type of a flat brush and I'm going to use this lighter one and apply it here to my eyelid and give myself a little bit of a glow. <laughs> I mean, um, like a little bit. I wanted to a little bit and I just can't because they're so punchy. They're really very extremely glowy. You have to experience it on your own to believe how punchy they are. If you like a super glow, these highlighters that are for you, I'm rather more on the natural, subtle type of a highlight, which means I definitely prefer more the liquid highlighters from uh, from the Rare Beauty in the, with the bottle and the Dofford applicator. Nonetheless, as you can see, this is incredible as well. And look how wonderful it looks like on your eyelids. So yes, this is the first shade that I'm going to use. And in the outer corner, this is the one, the lightest one, the Enlighten. And in the outer corner, I'm going to use this golden one and mix it all together. See, there is a little bit of a gradient right over here. which means that when we go towards the inner part of the eye, it's it's lighter, but then we go to the outer part of the eye, it is a little bit glowy darker. Of course, if you would apply this with your finger, that would be much, much better, but I don't want to mess with the formula, so I do not apply, or I, I, never, I, I never like use my finger with this, but definitely you can get a, a, a much more uh, much more impact on the eyes if you would apply it with with your finger. Good. Can you see how easy one and done the eyeshadows these highlighters can become? Let me let me approach so that you can have a look. Pretty, right? 
Only a little bit of an eyeliner and mascara and you're good to go. Good guys. So we have one last product that needs to be featured. So yeah, let me allow me to show you this. All right, guys, the last product that I would like to feature would be this one. It is called With Gratitude. Such a lovely name, so, such a lovely names of this product. Some of them, they're positive light. Some, uh, some of them, they're always an optimist. Some of them, uh, they're kind of warm wishes. Um, and this one is with Gratitude Dewy Lip Balm. So if you would actually put these products all together and look at, the, look at them, there's always a wonderful, a super uh, heartwarming message from the brand and from the creator, Selena Gomez, to you. And this one, the message is with, with Gratitude uh, Dewy Lip Balm. And mine is in the shade Blessed another wonderful and unique name for the product. We're having 2.8 grams of the product right over here. This is how the product looks like. And I suppose, you know, when I knew that I'm going to look um, much, much kind of like vibrant with my colors and, and glowy, I decided to add something to my lips to make everything cohesive. And I like lip balms. My favorite lip balm is the one from the Dior, you know, Dior Backstage, uh, Dior Addict, is it? Lip Addict. Uh, the one that is kind of changing color, very famous, love that. And I don't know what kind of balm this is going to be like. Is it going to be a little more on the lip, lipstick type of a style like Dior Lip Addict or is it going to be more on the nourishing type? of a style, we're going to check it out, and especially the shade Blessed. Very interesting packaging right over here. And this is magnetic, see, good. And this is the lip balm, so yeah, let's go with the flow and see what we can expect from this lip balm. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> Not my vibe. Not my vibe when it comes to lip balm. I thought I was going to be rather more on the transparent type of a glowy situation, while actually this balm gives me a Barbie pink pigment. But it looks nice. It looks nourishing. Applied lightly, it looks nice, but is it? This is for me. I would call it a lipstick. I would really call it a lipstick, and I would not call it a balm, as there is definitely some sort of a Barbie pink color to this balm, which for me, in my personal opinion, makes it more towards the lipstick. Nonetheless, it looks it looks nice, glowy, and nourishing to my lips. So yes, guys. That would be all when it comes to application. Let me finish, do some finishing touches and I'll be back and we'll continue with this episode. All right, guys. So there you have it. The whole Rare Beauty Eleganza Extravaganza right in front of you. Everything is finished and this is how it looks like. I mean the glowy side, non-powdered glowy side, and then you go to the other side and then you explore a little bit of a soft matte powdery side. Both of them, they're very unique. How does the makeup look from the close-up? Let me show you. The concealer, okay, for me, but hey, my under eye area is definitely very demanding probably more demanding than anyone else's. So this is the reality. This is how my under area, my under eye area is going to look like while applying the concealer. I haven't powdered it. I don't feel the necessity of, of powdering it. And then it has creased, certainly, although the concealer has creased, but in the way that I do not need to run to the bathroom to wipe it off. It looks nice. Everything looks cohesive. 
this is the the side with the primer right over here and the side with the powder and this is the side without the mattifying primer that's why they're probably a little bit more of a glow and without uh, the powder as well and there's a there is a beautiful natural glow so yes guys this is how it looks like in the natural light in the studio but right now let's go outside if the weather was will allow us <laughs> Let's go outside and have a look how this makeup is is is, is going to perform and is going to look like air outside in the natural light and then in the end we're gonna come back for a final check-in and my final uh, opinion about the products from the Rare Beauty. So yes, let's go and let's have a walk outside. <laughs> Hello gorgeous beautiful stars. <laughs> Paris Star Channel here with a check-in in the natural light so that I can show you how the whole makeup from Rare Beauty is looking right now. So allow me to approach so that you can have a look. By the way, there is a strong wind, so there might be a little bit of a interference during this check-in. Pretty, 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 pretty. And once again pretty and on my eyelids the highlighter I think it looks very pretty as well but then let's have a look from the close-up the concealer and then the makeup itself as you can see it is a little bit drying because as I've said already and I will continue saying many times my skin don't like silica in a foundations or in any sort of a product for my face. Silica basically dries me out and it sucks all my life from my face. And this is the result. Hello wind. <laughs> Good guys. So this is how it looks like. It looks pretty, but at the same time, a little bit makeup -y. And it looks, oh, I would say it looks makeup-y pretty. <laughs> and a little bit dry for my personal needs, for my personal taste. So yes, guys, there you have it. A final uh, check-in will happen in just a second, but this was the check-in in the natural light so that you can see how the makeup presents itself outside in the natural light. So yes, let's go back right now in the studio for my final check-in and my final thoughts about the products from Rare Beauty. Hello gorgeous beautiful stars! <laughs> Paris Star Channel here with a final check-in after hours and hours of wearing this makeup. Let me just show you one thing. I don't know if you can see it, it is almost 11 in the evening, which, me which means today for this check-in, I have been wearing this makeup for around eight hours, should I say. But then again, I was have wearing this makeup during the other day, so I definitely have a solid opinion and um, some some thoughts that I would like to share it with you. So here we go, let's begin. First, I'm going to approach and I am going to show you how the makeup looks like after more or less eight hours of wear. So, there you go. Wow, I mean, rare beauty, wow. <laughs> wow. And once again, wow. And then when it comes to concealer, this is a non-powdered concealer, non-set. It sets on its own. Really, not bad, guys. Not bad at all. <laughs> so yes, guys, let's start from the beginning of the application and let's go with the products one by one because there is a lot of things that has to be said. So... First product that I would like to talk about would be the pore smoothing primer. It is okay. The smoothing property, the, sm the smoothing features um, are not going to be a breathtaking. It's not going to cancel your pores. It are, this primer is going to blur your pores 
in a very kind of like um, uh, subtle way, should I say. Let me approach so that you can see. There was a primer right over here and there was no primer right over here. So if you would compare side by side, there is not much of the difference. Maybe it helps It helps for certain foundations to last longer, but then again, it was a little bit slippery, so certain foundations might have a problem to adhere to such kind of a slippery um, a surface. So when it comes to it claims and how it looks and how it's supposed to perform a smoothing primer, it is an okay primer. And that is why Paris Star Channel gives an orange light. It is a good product, but not a perfect smoothing primer product that you might have been expecting. Nonetheless, it is a good product from the Rare Beauty and it has an orange light. Good. When it comes to another product that has been applied, it was the foundation from the Rare Beauty. Well, if you would look at me like this, it looks good. It looks good. But then, well, my person, because this is my personal thing, okay? Do not be influenced by my personal things that I'm sharing with you. If you like what you see, then it's great. Then I'm going to tell you some extras which made me make that decision and I'm going to explain you why. So yes, if I look at myself like this, it looks nice. It looks pretty, especially after seven, eight hours of wear, eight hours of wear. But then this is when it happens the thing that I would like to talk about. After seven, eight hours of wear, my skin totally loses moisture while using this foundation. And you can see it here in the form of fine lines and wrinkles and accentuated dryness. No wonder because there are no in glycerin in it or kind of like emollients in the beginning so there are not enough probably moisture there's a silica and silica is just basically drying to my skin so this is the result it is a very pretty foundation but at some point it loses um uh, it, it it is um it is um how can i say it it is a beautiful foundation but rather more on the drying side then on the moisturizing side, despite the incredible botanical ingredients, it is an alcohol-free foundation, so everything it is good. But for me personally, for my major aging skin, it is a little bit on the drying side. So despite the fact that it looks beautiful, as you can see right over here, Paris Star Channel gives an orange light. This is the foundation that is very tricky. You certainly need to learn how to apply it, the amount, how many you have to apply it, what kind of uh, primers you have to use to make it look good. You really need to give yourself a little bit of a time to learn how to apply this foundation. And in these days, I guess I don't want to learn. I just want to have a foundation that I apply and it works and it's not drying and long wearing. This one wears off after eight hours of wear and this one dries my skin significantly after eight hours of wear and this is the result. So for me, in my personal opinion, despite of how beautiful it looks like in here, Paris Star Channel gives an orange light. The next product that I would like to talk about would be the concealer. A very interesting product from the Rare Beauty. As you can see, it has not been set and it did crease, obviously, but um, it is not that type of a product that I have to look in the mirror every five minutes. I put it on, it's there, it's here, and it works. It really works. And uh, similar to the foundation, it is a little bit more on the drying side, as you can see, but it, it gives me a very nice coverage. And because of the fact that 
it is not as moisturizing and nourishing as I would like it to be. So this is my own personal opinion. Despite the fact that it looks very nice, Paris Star Channel gives an orange light to the concealer because for me personally and for my personal needs, in my personal opinion, please have it in mind, it is a little bit on the drying side as well as the foundation. So as you can see right now, which means that the foundation and the concealer, they give me a beautiful makeup y look. I mean, it is a very beautiful makeup look. And I'm a person that looks for makeup, no makeup, rather. I'm rather more on makeup, no makeup, which is very subtle and almost invisible and indetectable. So that's why I probably will have to try the tinted moisturizer and their new kind of like luminizer, under eye luminizer, to, to, have, to compare it to this one. Because this is a beautiful makeup look and these products they basically give me that look and they look like makeup Whew. <laughs> my thoughts my thoughts anyway another product that i would like to talk about would be this bronzer from the rare beauty in a stick i love it guys i love this product how it easily applies, how it glides on your skin, how beautifully it brings a shadow to your face, you can easily contour your face, how easy it is, user-friendly, how easy it is to work with. I absolutely love it. So Paris Star Channel gives a green light to bronzer from the Rare Beauty. Another product that I would like to talk about would be the blush, the blush from Rare Beauty. And this one was kind of like um, a, dewy, a dewy blush because there are two types. One are dewy and one, one, some of them they're not. And it is pretty. You can definitely overload with the blush, but the how I showed you is, I think, a sweet spot. Actually, what I think is a little bit disappeared during the course of time, during the day. So when I applied it, it was definitely very punchy and very vibrant. But then, and as the day was going by, the, the blush was slightly disappearing. And this is the final result after eight hours of wear. It is still visible, but it's not as punchy as, and vibrant as I was applying it. So... Nonetheless, Paris Star Channel gives a green light to the blush, a wide variety of super beautiful colors and finishes. I think that everyone can find something interesting for, for themselves. Great, great product. And then another product I would like to talk about would be the liquid, the liquid um, uh, luminizer. I love it, although... It is very sheer and please be careful because it kind of has some sort of an oily consistency. If you're going to mix these products all together and apply it to the cheek and use the brush, this is, how, this is for me the way to go and this is how it is going to look like and perform. The liquid luminizer highlighter is not going to give you a massive glow. Nonetheless, it is very pretty, very subtle, very natural and I like it. Power Star Channel gives a green light to this highlighter. Another product that I would like to talk about would be the highlighters and the powder. These ones. <laughs> I think they're really very pretty. I think they're really very amazing, but they are rather more for the people that are like super glow. You really have to be careful not to over apply it because then you will have to blend it and they don't make uh, much of a difficulty while blending. Still, they are going to remain super punchy, super, super punchy highlighters. So on my eyelids, as you can see, they remained both of them and they look very pretty. I think that they're very good one and done eyeshadows in the inner, inner part. This one in the outer part, this one blended all together. 
they give you a super beautiful effect to your eyelids and I love it. On your cheeks, for me, they are a little bit too punchy, but they are definitely beautiful. So Paris Star Channel gives a green light to the powder highlighters from the Rare Beauty. I think they're really very good and no wonder why they are sold out all the time and why are they so viral. Good, when it comes to powder from a Rare Beauty, a very interesting lightly setting powder that is non-drying to the skin if you are going to apply it lightly. It gives you a very beautiful satin matte look without, as I've said, drying your skin. A very nice finish. Everything is kind of like put together, melted together, blended together, and I love it. This is where we didn't powder it and still the look and the finish is still very nice. Nonetheless, if you like to powder your face, this powder is actually very interesting and it gives you that kind of a satin matte finish without drying your skin. So Paris Star Channel gives a green light to the Rare Beauty Loose Powder. Another product that I would like to talk about, and this, the product didn't work out for me, would be the Rare Beauty Lip Balm. For me, and let me reapply it so that you can see it. Yes, it is balmy. But then again, for me, it looks like super nourishing lipstick instead of as a balm. It doesn't have that kind of a very balmy, nourishing um, features to my lips. It disappears really very quickly and it gives me a lot of color. Not something that I would expect from the balm. I would like to have a little bit less of a color, but much more of the nourishment. This goes towards the other side, gives you a lot of color and not enough nourishment. So for me, Paris Star Channel gives an orange light to the Rare Beauty lip balm. Nonetheless, it's pretty, it's very nice, but I want it to be rather more on the balmy side than on the lipstick side. And then, guys, the tools, the tools and the accessories from the Rare Beauty. <laughs> oh my gosh. The foundation brush, I love, I love this foundation brush. The concealer br brush, I like it and don't love it because the bristles here, they're kind of a little bit stiff. So they will not kind of feather out. They kind of going to press uh, the concealer instead of feather it out, but it is a very nice brush. The blush, the blush brush. Oh my goodness, guys, this is, this is a great brush. I love it. It is so nice to work with this brush and it is a perfect actually to diffuse this kind of a super punchy in color blush. A perfect combo and a perfect match. And then a powder brush. So as you can see, it is very interestingly shaped. It is very nice and soft and it can be very nice and precise when it comes to applying the, the product, the powder products. And for me, it works. I love it. And then another brush, the highlighter brush, very nice to work with. But I think I would find much more other purposes with this brush instead of putting the highlighter, maybe just exactly blending um, the, the concealer like this or blending some sort of an eyeshadows instead of using it as a highlighter. Nonetheless, guys, these brushes, I like them. I actually, or maybe should I say, I love them. Paris Star Channel gives a green light to the accessories from the, uh, from the Rare Beauty, the brushes. So guys, one more time, let me approach and show you the makeup from the close-up. I wonder, what do you think? Do you have a different opinion? It's totally fine. I do not want to influence your opinion. If some of these products that are your favorite and they did not became my favorite, that's totally fine. We are all different. We have all different needs. And 
that's okay. That's totally fine. If someone would have asked me the only one product that totally st stole my heart, like completely through all of these products that has been tested for over 400 euros, what would that be? It would be the bronzer in a stick. I think the formula of the stick, it is amazing. It glides on your skin. It gives you a beautiful color to your skin. You can sculpt your face. You can bronze your face. You have a choice. You can buy bronzers that are going to warm up your face or they're going to give you a perfect contour. This Power Boost shade, it's a very nice bronzer and I love it. Everything melts all together and it, give, it gives me that type of a look. So for me, this, if I would have to choose only one product, that would be this one, the bronzer. If I would have a choice to, to choose some more, I would actually go with the tools and with the brushes because I think they're amazing, uh, they're amazing accessories and they help me a lot to apply my makeup the way how I personally like it and I love it. So yes, guys, that would be all when it comes to review of Rare Beauty. What a wonderful brand and what a wonderful CEO Selena Gomez, that is the captain of the Rare Beauty, a great brand that produces and launches not only exciting products, but it is a brand that is helping people in need. So a beauty brand and a helping brand, oh my gosh, I love it. And a big bravo and a big applause. No wonder that these products that are so viral because they fit everyone's age, gender and, and needs. So no wonder that they are viral and I'm so happy that I had the chance to feature them in this video. So yes, guys, this episode has come to an end. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. Thank you so very much for tuning into my channel where we celebrate diversity that makes us all different and beautiful. Um, for the next episode, I have a little bit of a surprise and we're going to try a little bit of a vintage makeup, should I say, oldie but goodie, and it is from Italy. <laughs> Ciao, bella. Ciao, amore. <laughs> We are going to test Oldie but Goodie, apparently, which is Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation and the concealer. And then we're going to see the hype, what is going on, why these products, they're still so good, apparently, after so many years of being unchanged formula bottle and whatnot on the market. So yes, we're going to jump into the subject and see what kind of result the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk is go we are going to get. In the meantime, guys, this episode has come to an end. Thank you so very much for watching, commenting and connecting with me. I love it. I love it so much. Thank you. For now, it's time to end the episode. So guys, from Paris with love, take care. See you soon. That is for now. Bye bye.